What's the deal with Palm's new thing? And which social network is the absolute worst for you? Well, Hey everyone, I'm Jeff Bagar. Welcome to, nope, sorry, the CNUG Debate Show where I argue with my friends and colleagues over three rounds of dead serious cutthroat debate. Joining me today on the show, senior reporter Ben Fox Rubin. What's up, Ben? Hello. Hello. Little known fact, Ben invented his own middle name. Who the hell do you think you are? Certainly not Ben Wolf Rubin. <laughs> Here's how the game works. At the end of each round, we'll be given five points between the two of us, depending on who made their case the best. Assigning those points all the way from San Francisco, our own Vanessa Hand Oriana. How are you? Hey guys, thanks for having me on the show. You are quite welcome. Thank you for judging us. Uh, I think we're ready to start our first topic. Vanessa, please take it away. All right, excited to judge both of you on the answers for this one. Palm is back, and it's got a new device that is supposed to take us away from our phones. It looks like a mini iPhone. It's kind of cute, but I want to know what you guys think of this. What's the deal with the new Palm thing? Is it a lifesaver, or is it completely not useful at all? Go. I like the idea. I think this is a good idea. The digital detox wave is coming. Google's talking about it. Apple's talking about it. And now there's an idea of an actual device to push forward this idea of not constantly being on your phone. Every single conversation we have these days, somebody's got their, their face all up in their phone. This is, this is a good way to push that concept forward, I would think. The answer to less tech usage is not smaller actual devices for tech usage. This is a phone for your phone. I feel like I'm crazy. I feel like I'm the only idiot on earth who realizes what we're being sold here. It's a really bad idea. I don't think it saves anyone any time. And who the hell are you to buy $350 product that's your phone, but not really your phone? Answer me that. Okay, I will give you the fact that the price is a little too high and maybe the execution isn't quite there but I'm on board with the philosophy here. I think that they've got the right message out there. Maybe they're gonna get it right a little bit more in the second go round, but. Oh, there's not gonna be a second one, Ben. You and I both know that. <laughs> well, I also think that they're pushing forward with the uh, retro is cool, so Palm is back. Maybe they'll get some excitement about that too. So hopefully they've got these two things going for them and we'll see. In a million years, I'm never gonna say, oh, which phone do I have to bring? Uh, all right, what a ridiculous sound effect we had pre-installed for that. Vanessa, how are the points shaking out that round? Ben, I am so sorry. It is not looking good for you. <laughs> I think your okay, only guys. good argument was the retro bring back the palm thing. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna give you one for that. Uh, the rest, <laughs> I'm gonna have to agree with you, Jeff. We don't need more tech to get your tech addiction in check. Especially not like a miniature version of your phone, which costs $350. So four points for Jeff on this one. All right, thanks a lot, Vanessa. That's a tough one. That's a tough it one. is, honestly, it's like you, you were handicapped from the start there. It's not your <laughs> fault. That's, it's crazy that we had to choose sides for that. All right, time for the second topic. Vanessa, please take it away. All right, next topic. Alongside the Pixel 3 and the Pixel 3 XL, Google also launched an interesting feature called call screening, which basically can answer your spam calls for you and transcribe the message and answer back. What is your take on this? Is this a useful feature or is it kind of creepy? I think that this is a bad thing. Because, yeah, I think it's a bad thing. Why, are you surprised by this? Go for it. I know, I just think like, where are we at now where, where we're basically using a computer to talk to another computer? I just think it's an evolution of our emoji language obsessed culture that we can't be test. God forbid we're tasked with actual interaction with people. I realize a lot of this is for spam filtering and stuff like that, but you know people are gonna abuse it. You know it's never gonna work out in a way that is productive and we just have a dark, nothing but a dark future to look forward to because now my robot is gonna be talking to your robot and we'll never hear human voice ever again. Okay, step back from, from the cliff of doom and despair, okay? 
If you're in a that's meeting, where I live, Ben. If you're in a meeting and your buddy or your wife or the gardener wants to call you and you just use the feature, it's a pretty simple feature, just to tell them, hey, this is Google. Everything's cool. Why don't you tell me what's going on? And you it's get the transcription. Sure answer right. in the phone. You get you get a quick transcription, so you don't have to worry about this whole FOMO situation of oh my God, the phone's ringing. I'm not sure who it is, and I'm not sure what they want. It's if you look at it just as face value of what it is, instead of diving into this entire sad abyss of doom, then you know you use it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry for that ridiculous sound effect horrible. once again. We can't, we can't get rid of it. Uh, Vanessa, what, what do you think there? Uh, I don't think either of you had a very good argument. So can I just give cool. I, I disagree to with you. You're not getting points for that. <laughs> I'm getting five That's points for this one. Because you, you guys didn't touch upon the most important feature, which is the fact that you can have the robots talk to the robots. And I mean, you talked about it, Jeff, in a bad way, but that's a good thing because I want the spam people to talk to their own people. And yeah, you. All right, how do the points shake out, uh, Vanessa? Two, two, and one for me. Wow, Ooh. I respect that. All right. We're gonna have to make a new graphic for that. All right, uh, finally, <laughs> round three, the deciding round. Uh, what's the topic there, Vanessa? All right, guys, so the score is Jeff six, Ben three. So Ben, you really have to blow this one out of the water. For the final round, we're gonna talk about social media in general. So I feel like it's come to make the world a better place, but also ruin the world at the same time. So I wanna hear from you guys, which one of all of them is the absolute worst? Oh, that's an easy one. It's Facebook. Facebook is the worst. They There's can't, no wrong answer. They can't. Uh, uh, take care of your data properly. They've had all these data breaches. Cambridge Analytica was a huge problem. And then in the middle of the whole thing, they decide to try to sell you a smart display. What's the matter with them? Has there something gone wrong with Mark Zuckerberg? He's clearly malfunctioned. Yeah. And on top of that, uh, I'm having a conversation with my wife and then I lose her into the Facebook app. It's too much work. It's too much work. Please, honey, get away from it. All right, you. I agree. Uh, I'm gonna say I agree with the Facebook, but I'm gonna say Instagram is the worst of all the social networks, only because you talk about that black hole that Facebook has for people. The black hole that Instagram creates is inescapable. I'm talking about people walking into the street. I'm talking about people driving and scrolling through the answer. It's the act of being so easily scrollable and, and digestible that is ruining the world. Let's not even forget to mention the fact that every single Instagram post that you see on a feed is a complete fabrication of someone's real life. This is the, they are curating their own false representation of their life and it is making us all in this crazy competition with one another and it is ripping apart the fabric of society in a way that not even Facebook can touch. I, Man. I, okay, wow. Oh, yeah, that was pretty good. I don't okay. think I don't think I'm gonna win that. One. No, I just I Ooh, just you I pulled that one out, out of the I end. Black, there. I blacked out for a second. <laughs> Vanessa, what what happened there? Just give it to Jeff. Jeff, I love your enthusiasm on this one, and I'm gonna have to agree and add to your comment by saying that the hashtag for the gram pictures are literally making people jump off cliffs to get that perfect shot. So, while I do like your enthusiasm and it's a good point, I'm only gonna give you two points, only because Facebook messed up so bad in 2018 that they, okay. I think they deserve the prize for the worst social network of this year. Not to say sure. that the black hole of Instagram is not gonna be the worst one next year, but. They're both pretty awful. Yeah, so two and three. Okay, very good. That would make the final score eight to six me. This was a great round. I really have to say thank you. That makes me the winner. What did I win? Oh, something in a Dunkin' Donuts bag. What are, oh, I got a freaking, what? They put munchkins in donuts now? Are you serious? Oh, dude, I'm gonna split this with you, Ben. Wait, wow. do you want a lady in the tramp this with me? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, okay, here, we'll split this for later. Thank you so very much to Ben. Thank you so much to Vanessa in San Francisco. Hey, why don't you like and subscribe to the CNET channel, and if you wanna submit a topic for next week's show, pop it in the comment section below. Until next time, 
Thank you so very much for watching.